Good day. Welcome to part one of the Algebra 2 uh, Trig Regents exam for June 2013. In this installment, we're going to be going over questions one through five. All right, let's take a look at question number one. It says, um, a market research firm needs to collect data on viewer preferences for local news programming in Buffalo. Which method of data collection is most appropriate? All right, so census just basically counts the number of people. It's not really relevant. The survey asking the people about what they feel or what their preferences are about the uh, news programming is much more appropriate here. So taking an individual survey, conducting a survey for um, the people is a good way to do it. Observation doesn't really tell you much about your preferences. And a controlled experiment um, will skew the data because if you're controlling the experiment, you're focusing on a controlled group, for example, uh, a certain sex, a certain age. So if you're focusing on that, um, you're going to skew the, the collect the resource, the um, data from the, from the, from the research. So controlled experiment does not work. So if you want to get, um, people's viewer um, preferences, it's good to actually conduct this survey um, of the people. So option two is the best choice here. Let's take a look at uh, question number two. It says, what is the number of degrees in an angle whose radian uh, measure is 8 pi over 5? So to convert from degrees to radian or radian to degrees, you need to remember that pi over 180 degrees or 180 degrees over pi are your conversion factors. Okay, these two are equivalent. So when you multiply a number by this conversion factor, you don't actually change the magnitude of the angle. Okay? So uh, we have 8 pi over 5. So we want um, the pi gone, the pi radian is gone, and want to be left with degrees. So which of these two conversion factors will enable me to cancel out this pi and um, be left with the degree measure? So you can clearly see that this is the correct choice right here. So we'll multiply by 180 degrees over pi. The reason again is you want the pi to cancel out, so this pi cancels out with that. Now we can reduce, okay? So 5 goes into 180, 5 goes into itself once, 5 goes into 180, those are the first two. 5 goes into 18, 3 times, which is 15, remainder 3. 5 goes into um, uh, 36 times, okay? And then we have 8 times 36 is 240 plus 48. So 8 times 36 is simply 288 degrees. So you can clearly see that our answer is option um, number 2. Okay, let's take a look at question 3. It says, which diagram represents a relation that's both uh, 1 to 1 and on 2? Okay. All right, so um, let's talk about onto nest first, and then we'll talk about the whole idea of being one to one. All right, so um, which of these relations are onto? Onto basically means that for every element in your um, dependent set of, ver of relations, um, or your output, you can call it output, um, there is an input that is mapped to it. Okay, so let's um, call this our output. This is our in, and this is our out. This is our in, in, and this is our out. This is our in, and this is our out. This is our in, and this is our out. So um, for a function, a relation to be onto, for every out, you must have exactly, you must have an in. It doesn't have to be exactly one in. You must have an in uh, pointing to it, okay? So let's take a look at option one. For all the outputs, do we have an input that's pointing to it? One, we have two inputs pointing to it. Good. Two, uh, two doesn't have anything pointing to it. So this function is not onto. All right. So this fails automatically. Let's take a look at option two. One is good. This output is good because B is pointing to it. How about two? Two is left alone. So guess what? This function is not onto because there exists an element in the output that doesn't have an input that's pointing to it. So 2 is bad. All right, let's take a look at 3. 1 is good because C is pointing to it. 2 is good because A and B are pointing to it. 3 is good because uh, C is pointing to it. So this function is onto. Okay, so looking good. This one has, um, let's see, C is pointing to it. Good for option 4. A is pointing to 2. That's good. And uh, uh, B is pointing to 3, that's good. 
So these two functions are onto. All right, so we have the onto component checked. Now let's look at one to one. What does it mean to be one to one? One to one basically means that um, for every every relation, you have exactly one in going to one out. And when you're going backwards, one out is assigned to exactly one in. You do not have any any situation where you have um, two ins going to one out or one out with two ins going into it. So every input is mapped to just exactly one output. Okay, that's what one to one basically means. So let's take a look at option three. We know it's onto because everything here has an input being mapped to it, but is it one to one or does every output have exactly one input pointing to it? Option one is good because only C points to one. Option two is bad because you have two inputs, namely A and B, pointing to C to two. Okay, so that's why this is not um, one to one. If we wanted to make it one to one, we have to uh, scratch this out and point A to one, and then C is pointing to two. That's bad. Also, you scratch that out. Okay, that's how you make that uh, uh, one to one. But as it as it is, it is not one-to-one -one because you have um, two inputs A and B going to exactly one output that's unacceptable for one-to-one -one, you must have one input going to exactly one output and every for one out and for every output you have exactly um, one input going to it and also every input is going to exactly one output all right so let's take a look at option four is this one-to-one -one? Uh, this output has exactly one input mapped to it and two has exactly one out input mapped to it, and then three has exactly one input map, map mapped to it. And then when you look at the inputs, every input is going to exactly one output. So this function is one to one and is also onto. Okay. So another way to look at one to one is if you go in any direction, you do not. You can only go in one way. You can make an, a, a different loop. So if I go from C to one, if I want to go back, I end up that way. That's the only way I can go. Okay. For B. I can go from B to 3 and back, that's the only way. And then A, the only way I can go is this one route. But if you look at here, I can go um, from 1, the only way I can go out is to C, right? But wait a minute, from C, is the only way out to 1? Absolutely not. I can go to 3. So that automatically means it's not 1 to 1 because you can take a route from one item to another element in that same um, set. Also for A and B, for A, I can go only to 2, but if I'm going back, is that the only way I can go back? Absolutely not. I can go to B. So that shows that this is not 1 to 1. For 1 to 1, you can only go between two, one pair of, um, one pair of relations. Okay, so A to 2 are the only way you can go. B to 3 is the only way you can go, and then C to 1 is the only way you can go. All right? So our answer is option 4 because it's 1 to 1, and it is also on 2. All right? So there you have it. All right, let's take a look at question number four. It says the sum of the first eight terms of the series, three minus 12 plus 48 minus 192 is. Now, <clears throat> if you look at your reference sheet, there are two formulas. You have the geometric and arithmetic series. <clears throat> so the question is, is this geometric or arithmetic? For, remember, for arithmetic, you always add. Arithmetic is an additive relationship, all right? Arithmetic, you add the same constant, namely D, all right? For geometric, you always multiply by the same constant, which is known as your common ratio, R. For uh, arithmetic, you add your common difference, Z, uh, geometric, you multiply your common ratio, R. So in this series, are we constantly adding the same number or multiplying? That's the question. All right, let's assume that we're adding. If we're adding three minus 15 will, be, will yield negative 12, okay? So you subtract 15. Let's, let's say that's what we thought it was. You subtract 15. Now, in order for this to be geometric series, I mean, to be arithmetic, basically subtracting the same cone difference every time, this term right here must also be negative 15. If you subtract 15 from uh, negative 12, your answer is going to be negative 27. Is this negative 27? Absolutely not. So I don't, it doesn't look like we're adding here. Let's try multiplication, okay? What do you multiply three by to get negative 12? You multiply by four, right? Multiply by four. How about um, 
So if in order for this to be a uh, geometric series, I must multiply, if I multiply by, not four, it's supposed to be negative four, because the sign also changes. So to go from the first to the second, you multiply by negative four, and then to go from the second to the third, if I multiply 12 by negative four, do I get 48? Absolutely. So this tells me that this is a geometric uh, series, all right? So all I need is, let me write down the formula first, the formula for the sum of a geometric series. You can refer to your reference sheet. You don't need to memorize uh, this formula, okay? It's A1 times one minus R to the N divided by one minus R. So we just need A1, R, and N um, to populate this formula and then we can compute what the sum is, okay? So uh, let's list all the items we need before we set up our expression to input in the calculator. A1 is known as the first term. Okay, A1 is the first term. First term is three. Um, R is a comma ratio. You get that by dividing the second term by the first term. Or ask yourself, what do you constantly multiply by? So negative 12 divided by three is negative four. So that goes your comma ratio. N is the number of terms that you're adding. Okay, so how many terms are you adding here? You're adding eight terms, so N is eight. So in this problem, let me deviate my workspace. Um, the sum of the first eight terms, S8, uh, is given by A1, which is three, times one minus the comma ratio of negative four, that raised to the um, eighth power, that whole thing divided by one minus negative four, the comma ratio. Okay, so let's input this into our calculators. Now, when you're inputting a complicated expert, a long expression like this with a lot of grouping into your calculator, you have to be really careful to make sure you don't uh, create a grouping error, okay? All right, so for the numerator, I'll have parenthesis three times one minus parenthesis. Now, negative four, you don't use your minus, you use a negative right here, negative four. Raise that to the eighth power. And then, uh, let's see. Close that, close the numerator, divided by parenthesis one minus negative four, or one plus five, all right? Enter, the answer is negative 3,921. So our answer is um, option number three, okay? All right, let's shift our attention to number uh, five. It says, uh, what is the simplest form of that expression? Now, what makes this problem look complicated is the um, those denominators. If we can clear out the denominators, then um, it will look much nicer um, for us to do it. You have a denominator in the denominator, you have a denominator in the numerator, which is too much. So, all we have to do is look at all the denominators. Let me write this as a, as a fraction missing. I'm going to give you up my workspace here so that um, we don't confuse it with the previous one. All right, so... Um, what we're going to do here, we have 1, let me write it as 1 over 1 minus 4 over x over 1 over 1 minus 2 over x minus 8 over x squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look for the LCD of all the denominators. What is the LCD of 1, x, and x squared? The LCD is x squared. Okay, so if I multiply every single term by the LCD, all the denominators should go away, okay? So the, whatever you do to the numerator, do exactly the same to the, to the denominator. So in the numerator, I'll multiply by the LCD x squared and the denominator x squared also. When I distribute through the whole expression, in the numerator, I'll have x squared minus uh, 4x squared, where actually x is cancelled out with 1x, so it's going to be x squared minus 4 over in the denominator we have x squared minus 2x because it has an x in the bottom and you have x squared here so when you distribute this to that this x squared in the bottom takes out one x squared just like it's on the top this x took out one of those x's there so um oh i should have four x here mm -hmm. so we have x times x squared x takes out one of them so you're left with one so you have a two x in the bottom minus and then here it's x squared times x squared, the x squares cancel out. 
Okay, so what are you left with? You're left with eight. All right, so let's factor the numerator and the denominator. The numerator I can, uh, notice that you can write it as x times x minus uh, two times two times x. So I can factor out an x from the numerator. In the denominator, how do you factor this? This is a quadratic trinomial, so we can use the x game to factor that out. So I'll make an x. Uh, AC goes on the top, B goes on the bottom, so AC is negative 8, and B is negative 2. The two numbers are multiplied to give you the top, and added to give you the bottom is um, negative 4 and positive 2. So since this is a coefficient of 1, we can just put this right in here, so we can factor this. Um, let me let me show you the factorization steps over here. So you have x squared minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. So you factor by grouping, take out an x, you have x minus 4. Take out a 2, you have x minus 4. So the factored form is x minus 4 times x plus 2. What a denominator, okay? So x minus 4 times x plus 2. And then in the numerator, we can factor out an x, okay? So that becomes x times x minus 4 over x minus 4 times x plus 2, okay? Now, uh, let's see what cancels out. x minus 4 is cancel out. So your final answer is going to be x over x plus 2. All right, so our answer is option number two. So there, there you have it. Let me go to my answer. Boom. Oh, so thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Uh, and um, if you have any comments or questions about this quiz, please post a comment or also let me know what you think about this presentation. Uh, more of this review series can be found on magoserve.com slash test prep, or you can just scan this um, QR code for direct access to, to the collection of uh, Regent's exam uh, review materials. So thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.